Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. And if you're new here, my name is James and you're watching Wonderful World. So recently an old friend of mine got in touch with me and told me that his 15 year old daughter wants a snake and he wants to get her one for Christmas. But he had a lot of questions. And I realized that I've been taking care of a lot of snakes and a lot of different reptiles for a long time. And it's easy for me to take for granted that I've learned a lot over that time. But a brand new first time beginning snake keeper is stepping into the unknown and they have a lot of questions that they need answers to. And the last thing that I want is for someone to go out and get a snake and not know how to give that snake the best life in their care. So in today's video, I'm going to go over everything a brand new first time absolute beginner snake keeper needs to know in order to set up and care for their new snake. As your knowledge and experience grows, there's going to be things that you can tweak and dial in. But for an absolute beginner, I'm going to keep things as basic and simple as I can in hopes of getting you off to a really good start. And to keep this video from getting too long, I've broken it up into two parts. Part one is going to be about everything you're going to need and how to set up your enclosure. And part two will be what to do when you get your new snake home and how to care for it. So the first thing and the most important thing I can tell you is that before you get a snake, do as much research as you can and do that research in a smart way. Get information from as many sources as you can and take notes and don't just get information from the employees at the pet store. Employees at pet stores most often don't have the knowledge and experience to give you good information. And before you go out and get a snake, decide what type of snake you want and do specific research for that specific species of snake. Because the setup and the care for, say, a ball python might be a little bit different from the setup and the care for a corn snake or a king snake. So let's talk about what you'll need and how to set that up. First of all, don't spend your money on the reptile habitat kits that come with all kinds of stuff. Those kits have things that are not the right things and all kinds of things that you don't need. So make a shopping list based on the research that you've done and buy all of those things separately. And be prepared because setting up an enclosure for a snake is not cheap. The cost for all the different things that you'll need can add up. But keep in mind that the more you cut corners on the cost, the more you're going to be cutting corners on the care for your snake. There are all kinds of different enclosures that you can decide on for a new snake. If you're at a pet store, most likely it's either going to be a glass front opening terrarium or a, a glass aquarium. And as far as the size of the enclosure, most likely the snake that you get is going to be a baby or a juvenile and it might be really tiny. So as far as the size of the enclosure, you have a couple options there too. You could start off with a smaller enclosure and upgrade to bigger enclosures as your snake grows, or you could start off with a larger enclosure. And if you start off with a larger enclosure, it's really important to make sure that you have that enclosure filled with a number of different hides and lots of different enrichment items so that there's not so much empty space. Because baby snakes are scared and they need a lot of cover and places to hide in order to feel safe and secure. 
I usually start off baby snakes in somewhat larger enclosures. One thing that I do with baby snakes in larger enclosures is I include two small water dishes at different spots in the enclosure just to make sure that a baby snake is going to have no problem finding the water in the enclosure. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just using this 20 gallon aquarium because it's something that I had laying around. You'll need some type of substrate. And as you do your research, you might see a lot of different uh, beautiful naturalistic enclosures, and you might see all kinds of information about keeping snakes in bioactive enclosures. But for an absolute beginner, I would recommend just a simple sterile environment. If you're getting a colubrid snake, something that needs more moderate humidity like a corn snake or a king snake or milk snake, then I would recommend aspen bedding. If it's going to be something like a ball python or a boa constrictor that needs a higher level of humidity and their enclosure is going to be misted down occasionally, I would recommend something like cypress bark or Zoomed Reptibark. And either way you choose, just fill about two or three inches of the bottom of the enclosure with substrate. And here I'm going to put in quite a bit of aspen bedding. Aspen bedding is great for snakes because it holds burrows, especially if it's a snake that likes to burrow. And baby snakes often like to burrow in their bedding. You need to put in a minimum of two different hides in the enclosure. And you need to put one on one end and one on the other end so that there's a hide on the warm side and a hide on the cool side. So I'm going to use this piece of bark I'm going to use this old hide that I had laying around Since this is a bigger space I'm going to add in another hide which is this turtle shell You're going to also need to add a water dish that you fill with fresh, clean water every day. And it's good to add any kind of enrichment items that you can so that your snake has things to explore and crawl through and climb on. And you can use all kinds of things, even things that you might have just laying around the house. Even things like a cardboard tube from a roll of paper towels will work. I have this cut piece of bamboo wood and I'm going to put that in there. Whatever enclosure you use, you need to make sure it has a tight fitting lid that is very secure so that your snake doesn't escape. The advantages of the front opening glass terrariums is that they usually have locking devices that keep them locked. If you use an aquarium like this, you'll need to get a screen top. And you'll need to get some clamps that will lock that top shut. And they look like this. They work really well and they're easy to use. I put one of these on each corner of the tank. And I've kept snakes that way for years and I've never had one escape from that type of lid. 
So we have the inside of this enclosure set up and let's talk about light and heat. Snakes are cold blooded and that means that they don't generate heat and energy from the food they eat. So you need to provide them with a source of heat. And you need to also create a heat gradient from one end of the tank to the other end of the tank so that you have a warm side and it moves over to the other side, which is a cool side. And that way your snake can get heat when it needs. When it needs to cool down, it can move over to the cooler side and it can pick a spot anywhere in that heat gradient to serve whatever heat requirements it has at that time. The exact temperatures that your snake needs could depend on the species of snake that it is. But for most pet snakes in general, a warm side of 85 to 90 degrees moving to a cool side of 70 to 75 degrees will be fine. And don't use the stick-on thermometers that are sold at pet stores that you stick on the inside of the tank. Those are not going to give you any kind of idea of what's going on as far as the temperatures inside the tank. What you really need to do is invest in an infrared temperature gun like this one. They're easy to find at hardware stores and they're not that expensive. And basically you just, it has a laser and you just point that laser at any spot in the enclosure and it'll give you a reading for what the temperature is. So I can see exactly what temperature it is at the basking spot. I can see what the temperature is in the middle and I can see what it is on the cool side. And I can get a complete picture of all the different temperatures inside of this enclosure. You can provide heat for a snake in a number of different ways. You can use an under the tank heat mat, but if you use a heat mat, it's really important to use that along with a thermostat that will regulate the temperature because those heat mats get really hot. What I prefer to do is provide heat from above and you can do that with any number of different heat bulbs. What I prefer is either a ceramic heat emitter, which will look like this, or a deep heat projector, which will look like this. Now the deep heat projectors are a little bit more expensive, but I really recommend them for reasons that are complicated and I don't have time to go into in this video, they do provide a more healthy type of heat for snakes. Whichever one you choose though, the DP projector or the ceramic heat emitter, they're good because they don't produce light and you can leave them on at night and still have heat without disrupting your snake's 12-hour day-night cycle. And that brings us to light. It's really important for any snakes or any reptiles to have a 12-hour on, 12-hour off day-night cycle. And snakes don't necessarily need UVB light, but UVB light is beneficial for snakes, so you might want to use that. And it's easy to provide UVB and heat in one basking spot by using a dual dome light fixture like this. And you just put the UVB bulb in one end and the heat bulb in the other end. Let me put this back on here and set that over the warm side. And this has two different plugs so you can turn on and off either side. So what I do is I leave the DP projector on all of the time and then just turn off the UVB light when it's time for nights out in the evening. 
And if you want during the day, you can use anything like uh, LED lights to provide more light during the day. If you have plants in the enclosure, you can use a full spectrum aquarium light. But for a simple setup like this, a UVB light and a heat source will be just fine. So this is a very simple and basic setup. But in a very simple and basic way, we've set up an enclosure that will give your new snake a very comfortable and healthy place to live. And if you're a new snake owner and you have any questions at all, I'd be happy to help you any way that I can. So just leave me a question in the comments below. And keep your eyes open for part two of this video series where I'll go over what you need to do when you bring your snake home and how to care for your new snake. And I appreciate you watching and until the next video, I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.